Coming up on Good Morning Longhorns. Things haven't been so sweet for M&M's this year. More on what the company is doing now. Plus, a look inside Austin's Carver Museum. All this and more coming up on Good Morning Longhorns. Good morning, Longhorns. For Wednesday, March 1st, 2023, I'm Paisley Porter. And I'm Kevin Bosker. Thank you for joining us this Wednesday. Paisley, how are you doing? I am wonderful. I'm happy to be here. How are you? Well, uh, I'm going to tell you something. I'm, like, super busy. It's just that time. Uh, I cannot yeah. wait until spring break starts for one. Yeah, yeah. it's midterm time, so we hope you all are doing well. Yeah, for sure. How about you tell us what's going on in national stories? Okay. Polls officially closed last night in the on-campus-wide elections for next student body president and vice president and assembly representatives for alliances of presidential and vice presidential candidates along with university-wide college-specific representatives were on the online ballot, which was open Monday and Tuesday. After roughly three weeks of campaigning, the candidates now wait for results, which are expected from the Dean of Students' Office on Monday at 3 p.m. in the WCP Auditorium. Not all elections went as planned though. The university election supervisory board sent students an email Monday evening about a ballot error impacting the election for the university co-op board of directors. The election has since restarted and will continue until tomorrow morning. Next week we will have outgoing UTSG President Leland Murphy here on the show to reflect on his term and look ahead to the new student leadership. Two organizations you haven't seen on the UT campus will for a while return, at least on a provisional basis. On Monday, the university announced the return of Texas Cowboy and Pi Kappa Phi fraternity, both which were suspended over hazing violations. The Cowboys made headlines in 2019 when they were banned from campus after an off-campus hazing incident, resulting in the death of one student. While groups are back on campus, it will only be for a limited basis, with routine checkups and cap on membership until they prove to the Dean of Students that their organization can and will change. The University of Texas system announced last week that it would pause the creation and implementation of the new DEI policies. This comes after Governor Greg Abbott deemed diversity, equity, and inclusion policies illegal last month. Along with the governor, lawmakers have criticized diversity efforts in higher education, including in hiring practices, saying that they have strayed from their original intentions. The UT system said it will consider adopting a uniform DEI policy while system Systemic reviews of the policies take place. It's been an action packed week in Longhorn Sports, and we're breaking down everything you need to know this morning. You may have noticed that the tower illuminated in burnt orange on Saturday night as the men's and women's swimming and diving teams celebrated Big 12 championships. This marked the 27th straight conference title for the men's and the 11th straight for the women. Switching gears to ba basketball, the number ninth ranked Longhorns take on TCU away tonight and return to the Moody Center for a final home game on Saturday against Kansas. Both matchups are expected to be tight and will determine how Texas fares in March Madness in the coming weeks. Additionally, Texas track and field took home awards in the Big 12 Championship over the weekend, with the men bringing home bronze and the women taking the silver. We're all saying hook them to all those Longhorn teams, and that's the latest on sports. Over 16,000 Penn State University students have raised a record-breaking $15 million for the fight against childhood cancer during their annual 46-hour No Sleeping or Sitting Dance Marathon. This money goes towards a national nonprofit called the Four Diamonds. This group helps cover 100% of all medical expenses for families with childhood cancer. The 2023 marathon was special in many ways. Not only was it fundraising record-breaking, this year marks the 51st year of this event. I think that this story is just fantastic, Kevin. How about you? No, no, that is actually insane. Fifteen million dollars. Well, I mean, I know TSCV can use some funding like that. that oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, now, um, there's a lot of new technology, and there's a new technology age emerging, and that is the age of artificial intelligence, or AI. And by now, many of, many of you at home are probably familiar with the release of ChatGPT, 
and the the AI chatbot that literally talks to you like a human. Um, Paisley, like, have you like tried out Chat GPT at all? Like, it, I have not, but I was talking about it with my colleagues, and some people in my classes have started using it, and it has not had a very good outcome. So I'm still pretty weary of it. It's still pretty new, but yeah. Well. This new, this new AI technology, it's basically such a revolutionary tool. I mean, it opened up the floodgates towards other companies doing quite some of the same thing. I mean, we can talk about Microsoft, for instance. Microsoft has this new AI. It's called Sydney Bing, and, like, it apparently, like, has like feelings like it like if you interact with it it like says like it wants to like you know it like can fall in love it can take over the world and Ooh, you know, I mean, like, yikes yeah and then on top of that like yesterday snapchat itself announced that they're actually introducing ai in its technology as well and i mean i mean i guess if you guys want a friend you can you know use snapchat and uh yeah um, it, it is on snapchat premium so you do have to pay the oh. subscription plus yeah it's i'm not gonna not for me that. not for me <laughs> But like, it is very interesting to see how all of this stuff is revolving. Um, I, I do find it very interesting in terms of the future. Have you ever watched the movie Her, by the way? I have not. Okay, that's basically like a movie where like a guy falls in love with his AI, and it's like set in the future. Huh. So like, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I feel like we can be landing down that um, that aisle very very soon. I mean, do you think yourself that you think you'll be actually invested in such technology in the future? I don't know. When I think AI, I think Terminator, and that's pretty scary to me. I saw those movies not too long ago, and um, I don't think I'll, <laughs> I don't think I'll be participating that much. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I mean, we'll see how the future really goes. It's going to be yeah. really, really crazy, and like this is just the beginning. Just I know. The beginning. I'll find out. Before we go over to weather, let's talk about Austin's climate. We are coming out of our third La Nina winter in a row, and though it may not seem like it after the recent ice storm last month, the 2022 to 2023 winter season is currently in 13th place for our warmest winters, with an average mean temperature of 55.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Not only is our non La Nina winter warmer, it is also very dry, which we also saw when we only got 4.99 inches of rain, a significant decrease from our seasonal average of 7.25 inches. All of this to say that Austin is certainly on the path to its top 10 warmest winters ever. Yeah, for sure. And I, we're going to catch the weather right after this commercial break, so don't go anywhere, and we'll be right back. Let's take a look at weather. Joining us on set is Itza Martinez. What's the weather looking like, Itza? Thank you, Paisley. I hope you all have been drinking lots of water as we have been experiencing very warm weather this week. We start off today with a low of 66 and a high of 82 with a chance of thunderstorms. These hotter yet humid temperatures will follow into Thursday with a low of 48 and a high of 83. We will see temperatures get slightly cooler this Friday with a low of 43 and a high of 69. Then as we get into this weekend, we will be having some beautiful weather. For Saturday, a low of 44 and a high of 74. And Sunday, a low of 54 and a high of 74. So make sure you get outdoors this weekend because it will be the perfect weather. On Monday we can expect to see some cloudy skies and a low of 64 and a high of 79. And on Tuesday a low of 63 and a high of 82 with some showers. And that's the latest from the Weather Center. I'm Itza Martinez. Thanks Itza. Stay tuned for more Good Morning Longhorns after the break. Welcome back to Good Morning Longhorns. Joining us on the set now is Tian and Hugo. Tell me, how are you guys doing today? Great. I'm doing good. It's my first time waking up this early, like, this whole entire year. So it's I'm a little, you know, flustered. But, yeah. What about you? Yeah, no, likewise. I don't know how y'all do it, like, waking up this early, but so. Yeah, so. yeah no, I, I, like, legit have had, like, four hours of sleep. I also got an exam later today, yeah. so, like, you know, it's, it's been a stressful day. But, like, okay, anyways, you guys are here. Texas Union Festival, Film Festival. Tell me, how did it go? Oh, I think it, it, well, it went away. Well, yeah, yeah, I figured yeah, you won, yeah. right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. It was really fun. It was, um, the, the, the theater was packed. There was, like, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know how many seats can you, like, how many people can you fit at the mm -hmm. Union Theater, but it was, like, literally, like, full, and, like, the student spirit was really nice. And it was really just, like, fun to be a part of and even watch, like, amazing films. Okay, so can you go into, like, what your film was about and, like, just tell me what was the process of, like, just do, creating the entire film? And well, yeah, for sure. So my film follows a religious college student that goes to get his first tattoo and then the tattoo artist uh, 
I, I can curse, right? Well, I, I, I won't. Uh, the, the tattoo artist uh, screws it up, and uh, instead of uh, tattooing what he was going to, he tattoos the name Brenda into his forearm, which then he interprets as a sign of God. Then, like, throughout later of the film, he's just going to try and find a girl named Brenda. Interesting. And what were your thoughts on the film you produced? Oh, I loved it. Uh, when we were choosing nominations before, uh, like, the actual festival itself, it was, like, on the top of my list. I, I, I love the camera work. I thought it was really funny. Um, but yeah, it was, it was on definitely my top three, so I'm glad you won. Yeah. Okay, now I just want to. I'm curious about the logistics of what actually goes in the background of yeah. organizing such an event, and like I would know, like you're, you know, all the stuff mm -hmm. behind that. So can you take me what actually goes through to prepare such an event? Yeah. So um, at the start of the year, um, there's like a whole application process, uh, and then from uh, and then from there, you kind of work from kind of uh, mid-November all the way to uh, February. Um, so in November, you're kind of working on getting the emails out. Um, uh, I redid the whole logo, um, so doing that um, and getting like the prizes from all the festivals. Um, and then uh, maybe after January, that's when call of submissions open. Um, and so we send out all the advertisement for that. And then February is when um, everything just goes crazy. Sure. We're doing all the submissions, um, finding uh, like finalizing the venue, um, day of schedule, food, and whatnot. So um, I think so. It's, it's just a lot of work from no, all the way to from November till February. Yeah. So can you tell me like how many people are actually working together to like produce such a production like that? Yeah. Um, so how it works is there's usually two people who are uh, event coordinating, but I was the only one that applied this year, so it was just me. But I had um, my committee with Showtime, and we all worked together. Um, I had logistics do, or one of my officers, um, Stephen, do the editing, um, and then we had I, I had all the committee just like join in. We did a whole bunch of Google Forms just to figure out like what looks best, what logo and uh, what shows or what films to choose and things like that. Sounds like a lot of work. Yeah. I mean, like I, like, I would assume that you had, like, many tireless nights, right? Uh, yeah, I think, I, like, a few, a few, but, yeah. yeah, not too many, yeah. Okay. What years are both of you guys? I'm a freshman. You're, I'm a senior. You're a senior. Yeah. That's a wide difference right yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. So as a, as a freshman coming in and organizing such an event, like, tell me, what, like, how do you, one, do it? Like, and it's your second semester only, right? Yeah. Um, so, like, I had no idea what I was doing when I first came in. Um, I just asked a lot of questions. There was like a, um, so Campus Events and Entertainment has like a whole bunch of people. So I just went to them, asked them all about it. Like, what do I, who do I email for this? Or who do I go for this? And it, it was, I figured out, I uh, figured it all out now. Um, I think I'm very comfortable to do another event. But um, at the beginning of the year, I was just like so lost on what to do, yeah. But you're definitely much more organized than how I was personally as a freshman. But as a Thank senior, you. you're almost you're like about to depart, right? And yeah. like, just tell me like, this film, like, I mean, like, do you feel like it was like a good way to end off your career at UT, or like, is this like the starting point for something even bigger? Like, well, what are you, what are you feeling? Yeah, well, I don't, I don't know. I certainly like, I think it was a, like a great experience to definitely learn a lot about that, like about making more films and uh, just look at the people I collaborated with. Uh, like, shout out to my producer Julia. She's she's great. Um, but then I. We're actually making another film, which is like our thesis, which uh, we're going to be shooting um, in the next two weeks. So it's going to be fun. And Already and on the grind again. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to be fun and, and yeah. That's insane. And like you, what, what, what plans do you have for the future of the tech? Like, I mean, is there planning already happening for next year? Or like? um, I'm hoping to answer any questions for any uh, committee members that are interested in doing tough. Um, but yeah, I don't think there, right now it's kind of just like a little break for me um, in, uh, f in terms of tough. Um, but other than that, I think I'll be a little more uh, dedicated to like schoolwork and things like that. All right, now, yeah. one more question for both of you guys. If someone wants to be involved in Texas Union Festival, like in the future, film festival in the future, how do they get themselves involved? And like, do they need to have experience? Or like, just tell me, like, how does someone like just get themselves involved? Uh, yeah, if you want to be part of the event planning, I would say join Showtime or just uh, reach out to me. Um, I'm sure you'll find it on the Instagram, at uh, UT Showtime. Um, but um, if you, you want to be part of that, uh, definitely just join our uh, org, and then I can answer any questions from there. Um, if it comes to films, uh, submitting films, I think there's, uh, there's nothing holding you back from submitting a film next year. Um, there's, there's 
like no fees, nothing like there's nothing holding you back. I think just submit it for fun, even if it's we had music videos, things like that, just anything, and you could possibly win. And yeah. Seems like an awesome environment. And for my final question for you, do you have any advice for future filmmakers, um, people who want to obviously win first place like you? What, what advice you got? Uh, just have fun. I just, I just, I think like making films is like hard in itself already, and it's like a lot of work, a lot of nights, like, early, like late nights, early mornings. So if you can do that while having fun, I think that's the way to go. Because if you're doing it and you're being miserable, while well, I don't, I don't, I don't see the point. So. I guess that. Well, thank you to you two for coming on. For more Good Morning Longos, we'll be right after the break, so stay tuned. Welcome back to Good Morning Longhorns. As many of you know, today is the first day of Women's History Month. Women's History Month is an opportunity for us to celebrate the contributions and impact that women have had in all aspects of society. Today, we are highlighting the women of UT. First, we're going to highlight Stacey Abrams, an LBJ School of Public Affairs graduate and recent nominee for the Nobel Peace Prize. Abrams was the first black woman in the United States history to become the first gubernational nominee for a major party. She has also served 11 years on the Georgia House of Representatives and has founded numerous organizations devoted to combating social issues at a national level. Secondly, Dr. Teresa Long was the first Latina to complete a doctorate in health and physical education at UT Austin. She has earned the National Humanities Medal and White House Ceremony. She has had such an impact through her advocacy and education as the arts that UT has honored her with Teresa Lanzano Long Institute of Latin American Studies. And last, the late Ann Richards. She is mainly known for being the second woman to govern Texas, but did you know that she started her career by teaching middle school, excuse me, in Austin with a teaching certificate from UT? Stay tuned all month long for more Women's History Month facts. Finally, this morning, we're wishing a happy 86th birthday to the 40 Acres most iconic landmark. You guess it, it is the tower dedicated to the new Central Library. When it was first opened, the university said librarians upstairs worked on roller skates to grab books and then send them downstairs to students in the dumb waiter. The growing student po population outgrew the tower by 97, 1997 when the PCL opened. The tower continues standing 377 feet tall today. And the university announced a $26 million investment into the landmark, landmark last fra fall for renovations, keeping the university's true exclamation point intact into the next century. Paisley, what is your favorite part of the tower? I really love the library. They've got some really awesome Jane Austen books in there, and she's my favorite author. So I was really happy to see that whenever I went to the library. It is such an iconic library. It is. Well, that's all the time we have for today. For, good mor for more Good Morning Longhorns throughout the week, you can follow us on good Instagram at Good Morning Longhorns. I'm Paisley Porter. And I'm Kevin Bosco. From all of us here at Good Morning Longhorns, have a wonderful Wednesday, and we will see you next week.